So here I have um, Signal Studio driving an MXG. My MXG signal generator is hooked up to my field box. Um, I don't have an over there signal to measure. And I've generated a 5GNR signal. And that includes both a downlink and an uplink. It's just about identical. Um, I lowered the power of the uplink just so I could see it. That's the uplink. And the other thing I did is I'm in the channel setup for the downlink. I set it up to take slots um, 0 through 12. And about the, and each slot is about half a millisecond. And I set up the uplink to take slots 15 through 18. So when you look at the waveform, this is my downlink. This is my uplink. And I don't have anything here. And this each one is about 10, it's 10 milliseconds. So if I come into my spectrum analyzer, actually, let's first look at it in RTSA. It's kind of easy to see it. Um, and I left it at the 1 gigahertz default. You can change that to, you know, to the FR1 frequency you want. There it is. And um, then I can go into the spectrogram mode. And um, let me change the time per division to 10 milliseconds. So each frame kind of gets one box. And I can change maybe the powers so we can see a little bit more. Make this 10, maybe. Oh, 10 dBm. Slightly better look. So each of these is a frame. And if I want to maybe even look more closely, I could do that. That's two milliseconds per division. Actually, we could take, make it one milliseconds. And I'll just pause it when it's in the middle. Um, if it's one millisecond per division, this yellow is the highest power in this kind of color spectrum. And this is the six and a half milliseconds of my downlink. The next in that color spectrum is the green, which is my uplink. And that's two milliseconds, that's two divisions. And the blue is going to be my noise. Now let's go ahead and look at this in SA, which is where you're going to want to be looking at it. And we'll do one gigahertz. And I set it up for an FR1 of 100 megahertz. That's what I just set up here. Then we go into sweep trigger setting. And I'm going to set it up to um, periodic trigger. And it says it needs, in step mode, it doesn't work. What it really needs to do is it needs to be in FFT mode. So I'll drop the res bandwidth. And at 100 kilohertz, this is FFT mode. I do sweep, trigger, periodic, and I'm going to change my period to 10 milliseconds. And I'm going to synchronize it to external because I have my MXG output hooked up to my field fox's trigger input. Um, this is where if you have the over, -air, over the air signal, you're going to want to um, be synchronizing to GPS with one pulse per second. I don't have an over the air signal, so I can't do that. But this is the step where it's different for um, your setup is in this FFT gating setup and the synchronization. Then I go into FF, um, FFT gating, and I turn my gate on, and I'm going to, let's look at a couple of frames. We'll do 20 milliseconds. There's one, there's the other, and it's getting triggered right at the beginning. And um, my gate width, I'll set it up to six and a half. I know what mine is, and you may want to have to experiment in the, to know what yours is. But if it's six and a half, and I go look here, and I'm going to put it on the first one, well, actually, you know, I could do this one that I can kind of see the whole thing. There. And I'll turn gate on. And the top chart um, is going to show me, this is the spectrum view. This is the time domain or gate view. And this is going to be just the spectrum for my downlink. And I had done this previously, and I had measured about a minus 57 dBm power. Let's see what it is now. Yeah, minus 56, pretty close. And the res bandwidth is automatically um, set up. And I wrote it down just so I, because it changes with the gate. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, now look at my uplink. I know my uplink is 2 milliseconds. I set it up that way. You would want to know what it is. And then I'm going to change my gate. And I'm going to go look at the uplink, which is over here. And there's my uplink. And my uplink, it picks the res bandwidth of 913. So we have power level, 
and is about minus 73 dBm, RBW of 913 hertz. And the only reason I kind of wrote the RBWs is because I set my powers to be at about 20 dB difference. And here, they're not 56, 73. They're not quite 20 dB uh, because they're getting measured over a different RBW uh, in this setting. But I, I can't control that in gate view. It just controls it. So this is your downlink. This is your uplink. And this was how you could um, kind of in the trigger setting using synchronization to GPS make that measurement for the over there. Um, we do have another mode. Um, it's not quite what you were asking. This is the new five GNRs. And I thought I would point it out. And if I go into here, for example, oh yeah, it, I have a lot of power. Um, you can see it will give me my PCI and all these kind of performance indicators like RSR, QRSRP that you're expecting for your um, 5G and R signal. There is also another mode that if you have a conducted measurement, this is not for the over there, this is actually if it's conducted, you can go into 5G and R conducted and um, this will also give you the same results. So if we wait a minute, then you can kind of see it gives you more results and um, some EVM values in this table. I think you can scroll down and see some other parameters too. It's a bigger table. Um, but for example, here's the 5GNR. And I can change, for example, in Signal Studio, and you would see the effect here. Um, so that's about it.